All right, and we're back with another podcast, Fierce Podcast. Coach Judah here with Coach Scott. How you doing, Scott? Judah, what's going on over there? You know, <laughs> just trying to stay busy, man, watching a lot of old games. I just recently caught up on the the Jordan series. Uh, yeah, what do you think of that? Of them. The Last Dance. Uh, uh, yeah, the last dance. It, it gives a nice little uh, glimpse into the, the locker room side of things and shows how many things come into play to building a championship team. So I like the fact that they're highlighting that. But, you yeah, know, the, what do you think? Watch. It's good to watch. It's interesting to see behind the scenes of a team of that caliber. I agree. I mean, I'm just a little upset it takes the documentary like this to remind people how good Michael Jordan was. Well, but, a, lot, uh, a lot of these guys that are listening to us, they don't even really know what about all that. You know, they, they know LeBron James. They don't know Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just a different breed, you know. So I'm glad that they're able to bring something like this to light. And just a little bit of homework for you guys at home watching. Uh, to look up his games, even when he struggled, you know, to see how he still managed to to impact. So just a great yep. all-around watch. And Scottie Pippen, too. I think it makes a lot of people appreciate Scottie Pippen yep. uh, a whole lot more. All right. So with that in mind, we're going to keep our 14 seasons, 14 series going. And this time we're talking about 14 slashers. Um for people that aren't sure what slashers are, Scott, could you give us a little definition yeah. of what your slasher means? Uh, so when we're thinking about who to put on this list, there's different ways to define a slasher, really. But at the end of the day, I think what you and I are both talking about are somebody that knows how to get to the rim and whether that means they're doing it more through finesse or more through physicality and absorbing contact uh that's kind of player to player but at the end of the day they know how to get to the rim and that's who's on this list yeah i agree it's it's guys that know how to put the ball on the floor and create getting to the basket and also have the ability to maybe stop and hit a little short jump shot um so so that's what we're looking at when we made this list um, again, the 14 series is going well. So again, guys, just feel free to give us your feedback on what you thought and maybe some guys we might've missed, but let's get it started with, uh, no other than Timmy Bristol, 10th grader from Naugatuck high school. I had the privilege of coaching Timmy a few seasons, a uh, great all around player. What can you say about Timmy's game, Scott? Yep. Timmy is wiry strong. He's, uh, almost like a blur through the lane so it's hard for the defense to stay in front of him he's also quick off the floor on offensive rebound putbacks um he's got the footwork similar to a european player in a way in that he can weave in and out to keep the defense off balance especially in transition it's almost as if he's on skates out there because his feet it looks as if it's a mirage and they're not even coming off the floor when he's moving yeah, we're talking about a high-energy guy, so he does move very quick. I think he learned to kind of control that, and that's why he's made this list. Um, he's able to kind of use that uh, quickness along with finesse and his wiry frame to get to the basket. Um, he's very creative and protecting himself at the same time because you know he's going in uh, against big bodies that are playing physical. So Timmy's just a, a fun guy to watch, uh, especially when he puts the ball on the ground, attacking from the baseline um, and the free throw line down uh, in our 41 offensive sets. Um, next guy we have is Josh Daniels, eighth grader over at Capitol Prep, Bridgeport. Uh, I call him Manchild. Because hmm. once he puts his shoulders down, it's pretty much over. Scott, what can you say about uh, Josh in yeah, his offensive he, game? Josh is man-child because he's a man amongst boys. He's got a little uh, Draymond Green in his game where he can take a defensive rebound the length of the court as kind of like a point forward and make the right play with it. Uh, hmm. a, lot of, a lot of times the right play for Josh is just putting his head down and going to the rim because the defenders are – pretty much never stronger than him and he's also uh got kind of like bowling ball strength where the defenders are pins in a way yeah he's he's a guy that like i said once he gets downhill it's pretty much over um and then once they start to help he's just so aware 
uh, of dropping the ball off or teammates that are cutting to the basket. He can get a lot of assists this way too. So he's just a very, very poised offensive player. And like you said, most of the time the right play is just get to the basket. Um, Next guy on the list, we have Jordan Davis, 10th grader over at Ward. Uh, Very smooth offensive player, guy that can get to the basket any time he wants. What can you say about Jordan? Long athletic wing player, makes it look easy out there, can take his defender off the dribble with an assortment of moves and finish creatively at the basket. Mm. And one thing, and that that was when we had him, and, and it's just evolved from there because one thing – uh, these days that he's doing now, he's, he's throwing it down with authority. So he's uh, he's getting the crowd going with it, and, and he's making the defense know that they can't lose focus on him. Yeah, that one season we had with him, he was just a tough cover. Uh, and then uh, watching him progress, you know, with uh, Sharon over there at United and, and just watching him grow at, at board as well. He's throwing it down, alley hoops, uh, getting the crowd off their feet. Just an exciting offensive talent to watch. And he's just continuing to get better every day alongside with his brother and that young team over there at Ward. Uh, next guy we have is Chris Dodani, guy who's been on our list, uh, top 10 player in a fierce program history so far, fifth grader over at Mill Hill. What can you say about Chris? Chris, very deliberate with his movements. He, he'll square you up from the outside, and then he kind of already knows in advance where his spots are on the floor that he wants to get to. He knows how to get to them. He's strong for his age, so he can absorb the contact that, that he's getting. And then he'll he'll get to the free throw line, and he's got a great free throw shot, so he'll put up points that way as well. Yeah, he, he really, really trusts his floater. You know, he likes to get about two or three of those to drop a game to go along with his outside yeah. shot. I already thought he might have got snubbed on shooting. I mean, that's very possible. He is a great shooter, but when he gets into the lane, He's very tough to stay in front of. Like you said, very crafty with his moves. Um, He's got that quick first step. And he also can drop it off to the big guy on the opposite block if, you know, help comes over. So just our offensive awareness is very high, and he just continues to get better. So that, you know, the young group uh, that we have coming up, it's just going to be exciting to see them grow over time. Yep. Next guy on the list, we have Antoine Hill, ninth grader from New Haven. Antoine was a problem on the bounce. Every time he put the ball down, he hit you with either a Euro step or a strong overpowering oh. move to the left hand. What can you say about Antoine's game? That Euro step was deadly. Strongest eighth grader we've ever seen anywhere, ever. I mean, in, in, literally in like the history of basketball. Mm. Uh, play, played on our freshman team as an eighth grader played with absolute fury no one would dare get in front of him just they, they would just bounce off him like insects and uh he would take a triple team and 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 it still wouldn't slow him down remember that one game you were coaching with against the new haven heat where he he literally put up like 20 points in the first half and uh, they they just couldn't slow him down and they threw everything at him they, they, yeah. they threw they threw triple double team triple teams you know the whole team at him yeah, it was it was something to watch. He just completely controlled the game, and he was just fueled to go against his old team. Uh, when he had put his mind to it, he was just an unguardable force out there on the court. I mean, from the free throw line down, uh, get his body into you, finish. He he actually was a surprisingly good free throw shooter, um, so he would convert a lot of and ones, and he was also relentless on the defensive and using that physicality to then get a defensive rebound, go coast to coast, and do it a few more times. Uh, Next guy we have, Gerald Jacobs, eighth grader out of Tomlinson, uh, also known as G-Easy. Wait, what's he called? G-Easy. All right. I guess that's one of the the things. Uh, (laughs) uh, He's got a very, very crafty game. Uh, He plays like a guard, but he's much bigger than one. What can you say about Gerald? Uh, Gerald, fresh in my mind, coached in this past winter, great baseline driver, many games over this winter where he was unstoppable going baseline. The defense couldn't stay in front of him. He would use the angles to draw the contact. He has kind of like that James Harden talent for initiating the contact. And then he also, and this is a compliment. He's able to sell, sell it to the officials. So he draws a lot of fouls. Uh, it's kind of the way he changes his speeds in, in, in terms of how he's attacking the rim. And then, uh, 
he's very valuable in close games because he does get to the free throw line a lot and he makes his, a lot of his uh, free throws. So it really helps out in, in those close games down the stretch. Yeah. You said Harden. Um, I like Paul Pierce too. He, he, he could kind of just really yeah. sell it getting downhill. Um, angling his body up getting those calls he's improving his jump shot so it's even harder now to stop him going to the rim he's uh he's worked on his touch around the rim and uh he continues to improve on the defensive side so he's going to be an all-around player but uh an excellent guy getting to the cup uh next guy we have is cole croman uh sixth grader out of ludlow one of one of the guys that we've seen emerge over these last couple years um Really confident player. What can you say about Cole's game? Yeah, pound for pound, he throws his weight around better than anyone. He's not afraid of sacrificing his body. I don't know if it was Dwayne Wade or, or Allen Iverson, but somebody had a commercial uh, a while back where it was about like them getting knocked down nine times, getting up ten or something like that. Mm-hmm. And and that's like Cole right there in a nutshell for you. He gets knocked down and he just keeps getting back up. Uh, he's not afraid of the physicality. He's not afraid of drawing fouls. Just like Gerald, he's a great foul shooter, so it only helps the team. Uh, and he he does this all with with a business face on. You know, some people like to talk the talk. Cole likes to walk the walk. Right. Uh, very quiet. You know, mild mannered, but he's you know he's an assassin on the court. He likes to get to the basket, can slash through the defense. Very, very quick with his inside-out uh, crossover. He really improved on his mid-range, so that just makes it that much harder to stop him. Uh, getting to the basket, he's got an excellent floater. Um, and he's relentless, like you said, throwing his body around. I like the Dwayne Wade comparison. because uh, as, as he gets to the basket, he's getting more crafty. Like He's, he's using his baseline reversal now. You're starting to see him uh, use his left hand a little bit more. So Cole continues to improve. And, and as I said, man, the younger guys are is, is, is a group to watch. Sixth, fifth, yep. some fourth graders, um, next generation guys. Uh, next guy we have is Finbar Malloy, seventh grader out of St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, very, I would say, utility knife player. He really excels at all aspects of the game defensively rebounding but what can you say about his slashing ability you had the pleasure of coaching Finn a couple times yeah he's one of the stronger seventh graders you'll see he's a very athletic kid and he has a pass first mentality so he, he has all the tools to get to the basket when he decides to do so but he also likes to set up his teammates uh it, if he doesn't feel like scoring he'll make the right pass to, to someone else uh mm-hmm. and and this this is uh like a luxury that that not many seventh graders have like like this score if I feel like it mentality uh, like oh yeah if I want to score I'll score but you know I know I can set up my teammates also yeah very unselfish and uh, like you said it's a it's a luxury because that mentality is, is is special trying to get everybody involved first but once he does decide you know I need to get involved offensively and start to put the ball in the basket he squares up he uses that football uh, you know, background and physicality yeah. he puts his shoulder square into defenders bouncing off of them and hitting nice little layups and tough layups in the lanes. Um, great he, guy to have on your he team. Does, he, d- he does it all very casually too. Like, like in the middle of an intense game, you'll just see like, he's got this look on his face. Like, you know, they don't got nothing on me. Like, like nobody can hang with me. Yeah, no, he's, he's going to be a player uh, in high school. I, I'm excited to see what he does next on the football field and on the basketball court. Uh, next guy we have is Julian Marotolo. Help me out with that. I mean, your guess is probably as good as mine. Marotolo, it sounds like. Julian, help me out on that. Uh, ninth <laughs> grader over at Benel High. This guy, he, when he puts his shoulders down, Scott, as a guard, can you talk about the physicality he plays with getting downhill? Yeah, he, well, to that point, he's got a very quick first step. So if he gets that first step on you, then it's really tough to stay in front of him because he does get downhill. And the great thing about Julian is that he can do everything really well. So once he's in the lane, he can either pass, he can finish, he can make good decisions like pulling it back out again. And he's an efficient shooter. So if he does pull it out, he can just pop the shot and he's got that versatility. Yeah. He's got a great mid range. He, he worked hard on it. And, um, He's helping Benel out a lot uh, in their future to come, uh, playing a little JV this year. Uh, very excited to see what he does in the next couple of years over there. 
with uh with Andrew who we mentioned in the last podcast. And I know Kevin, uh Capita and all those guys are over yeah. there. Henry. Um next guy on the list. Guy we've already mentioned before, Ryan Moore, seventh grader over at Thomason. What can you say about Ryan Moore? You know, he makes a lot of lists for a good reason because he's a great player. Uh, in terms of his slashing in particular, it's be, it's it's a part of his game that has definitely developed over the years, and we've had a pleasure to watch it. He's be, we use the word efficiency a lot, and he's he's an efficient slasher. He he uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes when he when he decides to go to the hoop. And it's because he's getting physically stronger. He's more athletic in terms of his explosiveness on the floor, and he's able to finish uh, w- because of that physicality against you know tough competition. So he's able to do everything pretty effectively out there with, with respect to you know getting to the rim. Yeah, no, his ability to get to the rim makes things easier for everybody on the court, coaches involved. Uh, he just he's able to to get there with such ease, finish around the rim, both hands. Uh, he really trusts his ability to get downhill. He's got a great mid range, so that also sets up a lot of easy driving opportunities. Um, as you said, the the efficiency it's something you can't stress enough. This is a guy that probably shoots about forty percent and above from the field. Um, so he's just really taking good shots, especially within that ten foot range. Um, just looking to get to his spots and, and a fun guy to watch. Um, so we're excited for what he's going to do next year over at Tomlinson with a couple guys uh, soon to come on this list. Um, next guy we have is Jack Plesser, ninth grader over at Ward. Uh, I've worked with Jack for uh, quite a while now, and he's really made strides to improve on his offensive game. What can you say about Jack? Yeah, if there's anybody that kind of defines what a wing player is, on this list or, or beyond it's Jack. He is like the prototypical wing player. He uses his speed, his length, his, his athleticism, and he just gets buckets now these days. Uh, he's improved his shooting from the outside, which has made him a tougher defensive assignment because it creates more spacing and angles for him to attack. Uh, the, the defense has to respect the shot. And so he's able to, you know, use that to his advantage. And one thing that we don't talk enough about with Jack is he's actually has this unique talent that I really haven't seen many others have uh, at these age levels is he pulls up on a dime, like going so fast uh, at such high speeds. And he, he pulls up on a dime for, for floaters that are like right on target. And it just makes you think like, how did he do that? Because he's going so fast and he's able to just like have the depth perception to knock down that floater. Yeah, he's got great touch. Uh, I think that's what really helps him out a lot. He He's working on his footwork a lot, so that's helping him be more crafty in the lane. He's using his length um, to get to his spots and keep the ball away from shorter defenders and also move it out of the way of a shot blocker. Uh, just very crafty when he gets to the lane. But that first step, I think, is what really sets him up for True. success. It's just that speed. It's it's tough at the three or four spot when he jab steps and then goes right by you baseline. You're going to need help or he's going to just lay it up. He likes so, the jab. He likes the jab, too. Yeah. He, he Again, I, I, I really am hard on Jack because uh, I know what a great player he can be. But he works his butt off and he makes the improvements and the details. And uh, to tune his game. And he was a guy that made the uh, freshman FCAC uh, yeah. game had we been able to play it. Uh, but, I know. I was looking forward to going to that just to watch watch him play in that. But, you know, he uh, talk about improvement. He He's quite possibly top five most improved players in the history of our program. That's not that's not a problem at all. I don't have a problem with that at all. Guy works. Yep. You work, it, it pays off. Next guy, this guy is working hard, and he's letting <laughs> me know about it every day. Aiden Shea, seventh grader out of Tomlinson. Uh, I had the pleasure of coaching him in the winter, high volume score, but that ability to get to the basket was something else. Scott, what can you tell us about Aiden? Yeah, I, I would have to say that kind of like similar to Antoine, who we talked about earlier, he creates this problem for defensive schemes where they need to double or triple team him just to slow him down. They can't stop him, but they got to they got to try and slow him down by throwing all sorts of double and triple teams at him. And he kind of epitomizes the word unstoppable because, you know, people say you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. Well, that's Aiden. And the one thing that will take him from where he is right now to just absolute superstardom is if he continues to learn 
exactly when to time it out of those traps that come his way mm. so that, you know, the ball rotates and that you find the open shot in the offense. Cause uh, that's something that he's just starting to, you know, touch upon right now because he's realizing that the, the defense is just getting thrown at him left and right. Yeah. I would honestly, that's a good thing you touched on that. I would say the toughest thing and, and guys listening need to pay attention to this is putting yourself in scoring positions without the basketball. If you're being face guarded, how are you going to get yourself open? You can't stand there like we're in third grade and go ball, 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 ball for 40 seconds and expect to get the ball. The same thing applies once you get older. Teams are going to start to deny you the ball more. You got to move around. You got to move around. Aiden will improve in that area. Uh, But as you said, you got to hope to contain him. I mean, there's been games where teams are throwing two guys at him. Aiden's walked right down, hit a three in their face. Once they'd send him after he catches, he splits and gets to the basket. So he's just a problem getting downhill, using that physicality, big frame, and a fun guy to watch on the offensive side. Um, next guy we have is Zach Totora, another guy who's exciting to watch. Uh, sixth grader out of Woods. What can you say about Zach and his abilities to get to the basket? Zach is the finesse guy on this list. Mm. Most most of the guys that we've talked about are physicality. Zach is finesse. Uh, he... He doesn't need that physical strength to be just as effective as everybody else when it comes to slashing to the hoop. He can finish with either hand, left or right. He can do it from all spots on the floor. He can do it at all different sorts of incredibly difficult angles. He has all these different creative finishes that that when you see the ball go through the hoop, you're like, have to do a double take and think like, how did he just do that? Yeah, great left hand, great touch. Uh, he has quick step. Uh, getting to the basket so he can kind of stutter step and make defenders confuse backpedaling, go either way and get that high arcing shot off. Um, just very crafty. And like you said, uh, one of the more finesse heavy guys on this list, uh, doesn't use his physicality, but he has long arms so he can get around, uh, and through the defense without a problem. Um, just a fun guy to watch and look forward to him improving every single day as we go forward. Yeah. Next guy, last guy on the list, we have Brendan Walsh, sixth grader out of Woods. Uh, very tough guy, tough cover. What can you say about Brendan Walsh's game? Yeah, he was like the engine for your sixth grade team this past winter, right? He he's got like boundless energy. He just scoot, he just nonstop like scoots around out there. Right. Uh, has complete confidence that nobody can stop him. When he drives to the hoop, he uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he kind of like cradles the ball, s- similar to Kyrie Irving. Which is yeah. rare, for, which is rare for kids at at this age. Um, and it's, it, he, you know, he plays a lot of lacrosse, so it could be that he's, you know, doing a little lacrosse skills into into basketball with that. But it helps with his slashing ability. Yeah, he's uh, very physical, getting to the basket, doesn't mind the contact. He actually seeks the contact. Good free throw shooter, so that helps out a lot. Uh, when he gets to his spots, he has a great uh, slow down euro step that he could just throw on a dime and then throw a nice little high arcing floater. Uh, just a tough cover because of that physicality uh, at that age. S- some guys want that physicality, some guys don't. And he's able to kind of use that to dictate the pace and when he's able to get to the basket. Uh, just a fun guy to watch and, f- and, and even fun guy to coach. <clears throat> yep. All right. So that is our 14 slashers list. Uh, we have one more list, and that is playmaking. Let's. What do you think about that list, Scott? For next time, playmaking. Yeah, playmaking. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to give that one some thought. We got to come up with 14 playmakers. Um, I don't know. Give give an example of what we're looking for with playmaking. I, I haven't really thought about it much. Uh, hmm. When we say playmaking, we're talking about game managers guys that can also slash but maybe they're looking to get their team involved create offensively uh so getting a decent amount of number of assists a game something like that it's not positional though like we're not restricting it to like the point guard position or the shooting guard position correct it's it's just somebody that's got the ability to make things happen out there and that could ju- that that impacts the game in a way that, you know, somebody else might not be doing it. Correct. All right. 
I can so go with just, that. Yeah, give us some thought. And guys that's listening, why don't you comment some playmakers that you think should be mentioned in the next podcast on this post? Um, with that being said, Scott, anything you have to say? No, I'm, I'm looking forward to the playmaking podcast. I'm looking forward to doing more of these. I'm looking forward to the feedback from the kids. I know that they've been continuing to let us know what they think about uh, our previous lists and i expect that to be the same for this one as well yeah guys it's all about what you guys think and uh again we hope to hear back from you and we will see you on the next podcast till then take it easy later <laughs>